So everybody in. All right, so it's after five. Let's get started. Uh, how are you all doing today? Good, it's busy, <laughs> stressed, all the above. I uh, just want to get a quick gauge of the audience here. Uh, raise your hand if you're a first year student. Oh, wow. Okay. Second year? Third year? Four or more? Okay, okay. That's mostly four year, four year students, but uh, I mean, first year students, but we got everyone here. Um, so today we're going to be talking about preparing resumes. And my name is Joshua Hant. I am a third year student in electrical and computer engineering, and I'm going to let my fellow CAs introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Cecily Sonner and I am a junior majoring in business administration with a concentration in marketing. I'm also pursuing a minor in psychology and this is going to be my third year being a CA. All right, so I'm Neil Hairston. Um, I am a senior, so fourth year, getting out of here soon. <laughs> but uh, I am a psychology major with a minor in Spanish and I'm happy to uh, be with you all today and hopefully we can help you all get all the information in the world. So. Learning outcomes for today, big, big like concepts that we want you all to leave with today and uh, kind of have taken in. So uh, number one, the eight career competencies that employers look for in a resume. We're going to get more into that, um, but very important things to understand. Next, how to create a professionally designed resume. After that, the content you can include and how to prioritize your experiences, because after all, we, we have to put weight sometimes on a resume on what's more important. And then lastly, resources available to you to enhance your document. We're all students at NC State. We have so many resources available, such as the Career Development Center. We want to make sure that everyone's aware of all that you have at your disposal. So an icebreaker I want to do real fast. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask your name and you know, a fun fact about yourself. So I need everybody at their tables. It should be about eight to a table. Can we partner up real quick for me, real quick? Right now. All right, when you have a partner, raise your hand for me. Okay. Keep, them, keep them held up. <laughs> All right. You got a part? Y'all have first? Sorry. All right. If you've partnered up, just put your hand up. Let the table in the back. Yeah. Does anyone need me as partner, or you can do a yeah. three group? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, all I, want you, all I want you all to do is just introduce yourself to that partner. And then when I say, like, switch, you're just going to switch and um, introduce yourself to, of course, just do the reverse. That's it. Simple as that, OK? Sound easy enough? Perfect? All right. So ready, set, go. Switch. Switch now. That's it. That's it. No more introducing. Let's back up. Eyes back up here. Eyes back up here. So how, how many people are mad at me right now because I like made y'all hurry up and just have to spit stuff out? I feel that. I understand. So there's a reason why I did that. I didn't do it just arbitrarily to make people's lives terrible. So hopefully, if my timing is right, it should have been about six seconds. And one thing that we have learned over time is that when employers look at resumes, on average, they look at it for about six seconds. And resumes are in a way of introducing your, are a way of introducing yourself to these employers, correct? So imagine you see how like tough that is, right? So what now that we've done that, like hopefully after today we can ease some of those nerves and make it a little easier. But now what I want you to do to the person to your left or right, now introduce yourself fully. Don't worry, I won't cut you off, I promise. All right, so go on ahead and do that for me. All right, let's bring it back bone on, up to the front. All right. Everybody good? We all good? I'm sorry if I destroyed some conversations. I love you all, I promise. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to let Josh take it away, and we're going to start with how to engage. Or just kidding. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, so actually, before we get started and really into things, so who is your audience, right? So these resumes, as I mentioned earlier, are ways of, introdu are of introducing yourself to these employers. So one important thing is, who is your audience? Who are you talking to? Who is, who is this resume for? So when you're, when you're writing a resume, a resume, let's say someone in engineering versus someone who's in the College of Design, 
those resumes may not look the same. For example, someone in engineering might prioritize technical skills really high up on their resume, while somebody in design might focus more on like project experience as far as prioritization. So there's a lot of things you have to consider, right? So first thing you want to think about in your mind is who is your target audience? Who is this resume for? So moving forward. Okay, so you want to engage your reader. That audience that Neil was talking about, you want them to look at your resume and really like appreciate the time you've put into it. We say that you should keep your resume to one page. If it's too long and you got stuff going down the page, that means you're going to have to cut something. Keep the most relevant stuff on the resume. Next, uh, you want to focus on the, the look of it. You want it to look professional. You want the formatting to be symmetrical. Everything's formatted the same throughout the sections. You just want it to look good so that when they look at the resume, they can find what they're looking for immediately. That also goes with like highlighting certain um, parts of your resume through different things like bolding this thing or putting something in all caps, stuff like that will really help engage the reader and they'll, the objective is to highlight your strengths and what you want them to get out of your resume as fast as possible since they are only looking at it for about six seconds. So we're going to have the huge big flip transition into the eight ball. <laughs> so uh, the core eight competencies that I mentioned a little bit earlier in the learning outcomes. So. I, I'm not going to run through all eight of them. We would be here. We have a whole launch actually dedicated to some of that, but I want to gloss over some of the really uh, big, important ones, I think. Um, so number one uh, for me uh, that I would say is cr so critical thinking and problem solving, right? So basically a way to describe that would be being able to take your knowledge, data, and things given to you and applying those and being able to solve problems with, that, with those resources and that information. And the other big competency that I want to hit on uh, that's really important is something called career management. Because I feel like that's one of the most like, confusing ones when you read that. Because you, know, you have something like leadership. People kind of have a general idea of leadership. But career management uh, is basically being able to clearly and like, strongly articulate your skills and your strengths um, through, I mean, even through conversation, I mean, through resumes, cover letters, and so on. So, Big thing about these competencies uh, that makes them so important are we have found that these eight things are something that employers all look for and they would like to see in a candidate. So these are things you want to embody. So before I move any, uh, forward in, uh, at all, I wanted to ask uh, to scan the room, are there any competencies that you have any questions about or may be more curious about just from looking? Please feel free to ask because I want to involve you all in this as much as we are up here. Yes, back there. What's your name? Whoops. Sorry. You said what now? Sorry. Kara. Kara? Okay, Kara. Let's go. So when we talk about professionalism, we're talking about work ethic. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> so how do you really emphasize that you do have a good work work ethic? Because like you can say you're hardworking, and then like you might have some other abilities that you have that kind of like emphasize it. But like, how will you actually work that? Because anybody can say, "Hey, I'm a hard worker," mm -hmm. and then you can see like. So Kara had a really good question. Uh, basically, uh, she was asking, how, how would you word or also like get across um, to say like you have strong work ethic, work ethic or are hard working, uh, whether that be in like you know resume, cover letter, and so on. So one thing I would say is quantifying things on your resume that shows weight and strength on things like how much you're doing. So like for example, if I was writing about uh, career ambassadors, like something like this on my resume. Maybe saying that I, you know, I would present from all the way from maybe eight uh, to rooms of like maybe 80 to maybe beyond like 100 plus like students, because that gives weight to that, right? That shows that I'm I'm really um, this isn't just some like quick conversation. I'm talking to like a few students. This is on a large scale, and that requires a lot of work. But um, besides that, what I also want to do, uh, we actually have a wonderful person here today, career counselor to the side, Miss Sarah Wild. Um, side note, if any of you are not first years in CHAS, she is your career counselor. So a good person to know. Um, but I would like to maybe get her opinion on that as well. What do you think? I think it's really important for employers when you're starting to highlight your competencies that employers are looking for. You have a lot of avenues to do that. So not only on your resume, but you'll have a LinkedIn, you'll have a cover letter, you'll have a phone interview or an in-person interview where you can kind of just 
describe what you've accomplished in your roles? <laughs> it's a gift. Microphone. It doesn't project, but it's a recording. Um, so I think just to keep in mind, there's lots of avenues where you can highlight and kind of talk about your experiences. But a little later, the team is going to talk to you a little bit about how to create really well-developed bullet points that highlight what you've done in a really professional, strong way. And so that's a, a big piece of how to highlight the skills that employers are looking for. So um, that will be coming up in just a, a few minutes. So hopefully you'll be able to see some examples of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Kara, for that question. Is there anyone else who has any other questions so far at this point? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Sure. I felt the exact same way. And what's your name? Hannah. Hannah? All right, Hannah. Good question. So Hannah asked, uh, what do we mean by like the information technology application? So I remember when I first saw that one, I had the same thing. I was like, what, what is this? So uh, and long and short of it is um, basically how well you utilize like technologies available to you. So that, that would be all the way from, I mean, even something as simple as like utilizing Google Calendar, like not everybody uses that, or even just general technologies that we have around, um, even email or things of that nature. Just being able to properly utilize them and effectively utilize them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to be looking at an overview of a resume, and if you have your career guides out, if you could turn to page 18 and maybe share with the people around you. Um, the career guide is a great resource. If you want to look through that for a few seconds, you can, definitely. And you'll know you're on the right page when you see Neil's face. It's me. <laughs> Okay, so this is Grace Global's resume, and you can be looking at it while I'm talking. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about how you have about six seconds before the employer sort of makes judgment on your resume, and a lot of that has to do with the visual aspect. Um, so there is not a lot of white space on this resume, and by white space, I just mean empty parts of the resume. So you really want to make sure everything's, the page is filled up as much as you can without clustering everything together. Um, they use a very professional font, and they do change the sizes. They make things bold to make parts of the resume stand out, but they're not doing crazy different fonts throughout the whole resume. Um, Grace Global also has all of her dates listed on the right side to keep that part separate and to also fill up the right side of the paper. And you can look at other resumes that have dates listed differently for ideas. So that is the overview of the resume, and we will get more in-depth with that later. And one more thing I actually want to point out as well, is if you look at uh, Grace Global's resume and the career guides, um, something really important I always like to touch on is like consistency and like formatting. So you, like I said, as Cecily was talking about, the dates are all aligned to the right, but then as well as just how they're written, everything is all very consistent, as well as on the right when she's describing the positions, everything follows this consistent pattern. So consistency is very important. It makes things a lot easier. To also within each section, this is very important. You want to have your uh, experiences listed in reverse chronological order. So do your most recent job first and then follow it by older jobs. <coughs> so this is the heading of the resume. Um, she's going to include her cell phone and her email address, but do not put the word cell phone or email. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll assume that that's what that is. Um, you can also include the city and state you're from if you're not comfortable putting your full address. You don't need to do that. And then we also recommend people do their LinkedIn profile. And would you recommend people doing like their dorm address or their home address? Um, I would do, you could put both on there, but I would do the current address if you're expecting mail or something from them. But then again, you could also just do the city and state. Yeah. So um, people don't really, they're not going to probably be mailing you anything. So that part is not, don't worry too much about that. And then with the LinkedIn profile, we do have a LinkedIn launch later on, and we'll tell you how to do a custom URL so you don't have a lot of numbers, and you could pop that in your resume really easy. And um, what other questions do we have about the heading? All right. <clears throat> Super huge transition. <laughs> All right. So if we look also towards the top, you should see a section called the professional summary. So... How many, how many people in this room are familiar with like an objective, like on a resume? How many people have heard of like an objective? Okay, okay, okay. Cool. 
So objectives are really cool. Um, I mean, they taught, of course, they mainly get across the point of like what you're looking for, literally your objective. But one thing we've been more so leaning towards is something called professional summaries. Uh, number one, because I know, I know even me personally, when I'm writing, when I've written like my resume or like edited it, I remember I was always worried like, oh, will they get a good picture of me through this resume? I'm just writing things I like did and like my job, but will they really get a good picture of me? And I think that's where the professional summary does a really good job of telling a little bit about you in a very concise way, um, but also very effective in getting its message across. So if you look, you'll notice that Grace said, uh, well, I'll read it real quick. So collaborative, resourceful problem solver with a passion for foreign affairs, seeking a full-time summer internship with nonprofit or state government organization in the Raleigh area. So there's a few things we got from that. We got some qualities about Grace herself, what she brings to the table, what her passion is, what she's, and, and mainly what she's looking for. Three things. So, uh, I usually, so when you're creating these professional summaries, um, one big thing I would say, so ask, ask yourself, and it's a really big question sometimes, but like, who are you? What are some big quality, or what are some things about yourself that maybe you like, or maybe you bring to the table? Do you think you're creative? Do you think you are, do you think you're good at like solving problems? Uh, do I have any like math majors or like any like engineering or anybody, anything like that? Cool. So like being in those majors, you're being trained to problem solve like constantly on a lot of different things. So that's something to consider. So think about those skills, skills that you bring to the table, as well as, as well as what you're looking for, not just like seeking an internship, but also maybe what you have a passion for, and include those. It helps make a, give a greater picture of who you are. So something we really recommend. One little small thing I do want to add, however, is uh, if, if you're applying somewhere and you're allowed to like write a cover letter, it actually is perfectly okay to omit the professional summary and objective off of your resume when you're sending in that application, if there's going to be a cover letter. Because your cover letter effectively does that for you. So, and any questions about that? So. All right, next we're gonna talk about the education section of the resume. Uh, so in the education section of the resume, you wanna highlight which degree you're getting uh, that's why Grace here has bolded that portion. You want to say which institution you're getting that degree from and put your expected graduation date. And here again, we right aligned it because that's the format we're using for the whole resume. You want to include your GPA if it's a 3.0 or above. Uh, you also want to, if, if your major GPA is higher than your normal GPA, then go ahead, throw that on there as well. Uh, here we also included uh, concentrations or any minors you could possibly be looking for. You could also include any study abroad experiences you have in this section. Uh, another thing you could possibly do is add a relevant coursework section right below that, maybe when you get further on into your college career. Um, got a question for everyone. True or false, high school uh, education comes off the resume in your junior year? Okay, false. Why? <laughs> it's always the whys that get you there. It's false because it should come off after your freshman year. So like, just take that off after you've completed your first year here and put on your uh, GPA that you actually have from this university now. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about that. Does anyone have any questions about what you might want to add? Yes, all right, so the question was, what if you have degrees from other institutions? Yes, you should uh, list those in reverse chronological order. Um, actually, I'll answer that question. What's your name? Amos. Amos, great question. So uh, for me recently, I wasn't always a psychology major, and I am that now. And there was a period of time where I was kind of transferring over. So what I did on my resume is I put intended major psychology, and then, you know, the professional summary I was talking about, I kind of mentioned, like, because um, I used to be in mathematics. I was, like, former mathematics major, now transferred into psychology. So people have a, like, greater picture. But I put my intended major there. 
because that is eventually the ultimate goal. And if I'm giving my resume to like certain people, most likely they're fitting in that field, so it would make probably the most sense. <laughs> so So, that's a good one. <laughs> for me, I don't know, I, I kind of worded all of it out because I have electrical and computer engineering. Uh, do you have I was going to say, Sarah, do you have anything on that one? arts and communications, you would just list one and then list the second one underneath. Um, but you would list the full name for each of them. Don't just write double major. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I can't do this mic stuff. <laughs> You're going to hear like half my answers in the recording. <laughs> and I thought, or you had a question. So, yeah. yeah. So that was a really great question. So basically, the question was, um, when we're like saying removing like stuff from high school, does that also include like activities and stuff of that nature? Um, I would say so. However, I will say if you've done something very impressive, like in high school, because for example, I have a friend who literally got an internship with Cisco in high school because he sent a video to them. Yeah, it's like really rare thing. He sent this video to them and like really got accepted through this thing. So that was a really impressive thing. Um, but unless it's something like that, um, or yeah, like I said, a really high high achievement, I would probably take I would probably take it off. But, yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> Say that's fair. She's the star. Um, if you have community college experience and you received an, a, a degree from that institution, yeah. you would include it in your education section. Same as if you, so if you transferred from a community college and you received a degree, you would include it as well as NC State. That's right. So if you just took a couple classes, college classes at a community college, you don't need to include it. If you transferred from another university and didn't receive a degree from there, you don't need to include that either. And did everybody hear what Sarah said? Did you all hear back there? She said if you um, don't get a degree from there, you do not need to put it on your resume if you transfer from a different college. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll recommend it for you if you, if you did get a degree to keep it on your resume if you think that you can take it up space. And I feel like it's just implied that if you're a transfer, you transfer that you have you know, some, some experience in community college. In other words, is it, is it okay to omit it from the resume? If you are really involved on campus and in the community and you have internship experience and you're trying to find a way to fit everything onto your one page resume, if you wanna take off your community college experience with that associate's degree, you can. But if you have space for it, I would recommend including it. A lot of good questions. Next, yeah. we're going to talk about the experience <coughs> section. Uh, this is where, like Cecily said earlier, you want to list your experiences in reverse chronological order. Uh, you can either put um, just paying jobs, or you can include volunteer work in here. You can make it a relevant work experience section. But what you want to highlight is the position you held, for how long you held it, and where that was. And for each of these positions, underneath that, you want to have several bullet points explaining what you did and what you accomplished. So here in Grace's example, as a child care provider, she supervised and guaranteed the safety of three children and then listed their ages. Right there, she quantified how old the children were. So we recommend quantifying any experiences that you can quantify. If you think oh man, there's just really nothing I can do with the job I held in terms of quantifying it. Try to think really hard about some creative way, like 
if there was something you could quantify. If not, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But I'll come in the future. Um, another great thing that Grace did in that statement right there was that she used action verbs, which are on page 30 of your career guides if you want to check those out real quick. So action verbs really help improve the statements. They, they just read a lot better. They, they sound like you accomplished, that, that you're more um, productive with it. They just really improve the quality of the resume if you include them in there. Um, anything else? Yeah, it's very important to make sure you don't use full sentences here. Um, they should also try to fill up that line. You're, again, trying to get rid of all the white space on your resume. And um, I personally like to go into the job description and pick my action verbs from that if I can at any point, and then make sure I'm not using the same action verbs over and over again. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about action verbs a little bit later on, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the third summer, I was a supervisor for my position training. How did I write that? So I would say, so I had, I had, well, I guess I didn't progress in position, but I did have something where I did over several summers. Mm -hmm. um, and what I know what I do on my resume, I include that whole period of time, although where, so if I could like put, yeah. So kind of like you see where like lifeguard is like seasonal right here. Uh -huh. Um, what I did is I put summers in parentheses there okay. to kind of like establish like it was like during the summer time when that's taking place. Um, as far as the position like change, mm -hmm. how, if I may ask you, how much like difference? Um, it's just like, it was yeah. called supervisor, so yeah. there was interns and then there's supervisor, so it just kind of clarified. And did your like tasks change a lot or were they? It was just, it was just more like a leadership position. Okay. You, you could include that as a different bullet point, like was advanced to a supervisor in this year. Mm -hmm. or um, spec, there's a yeah. lot of different ways. Every resume is going to be a little bit different, so it's up to you. It's up to what else you have on your resume, like how many more bullet points you can add to it. Um, I do definitely recommend coming into the Career Center if you have personal questions or just want someone to look over your resume, and we'll talk about that later on too. And if you have a few other, like maybe le things you feel fall under leadership, I would also say maybe consider making like a leadership experience section and throwing that under there along with everything else. Great question. Um, if you have a study abroad experience that is with like an internship and kind of for course credit, like as a class, would you consider education or maybe career? Ooh, that is a really good question. Do you mean? Um, if, if, if you had any like leadership role in it, I would put it under experience or leadership or some okay. sort of section like that. You could also, at the top of your resume, under education, just put study abroad and where you studied abroad, and then a, a different section include all the yeah, um, tasks right. you did. You could also title the section Internship, that can kind of cover both pieces mm -hmm. of the puzzle. Any other questions? All right. All right, and you might be asking yourself, what if I don't have any relevant work experience for the internships I want? I haven't had an internship yet. What do I put on my resume? And this is where transferable skills come in. And the definition for transferable skills is the skills you acquire and transfer to future employment settings. And um, these can cover the eight career competencies we talked about earlier. So a lot of them are like interpersonal, communication, leadership, and organizational skills. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to do an activity. And I'm just going to give you an example of a transferable skill right now. So here's Drake, and he is a cashier. So you know, you know what a cashier does. They ring people up. They talk to people, scan their items. So instead of saying you know, that he was a cashier, he could say, provided excellent customer service. That's a transferable skill that can go on to any other job you're doing later in life. Or um, handled conflict, that's a transferable skill. So on each of your tables, you have three sheets of paper. And I have some extra pins up here. And each team has a different celebrity. And I want you all to work together to come up with some transferable skills for the celebrity job. So if you're on the outside, if you want to come in and yeah. join another group. Yep. And does anyone have any questions about this activity before we start? Yep. All right. All right. And also while you're doing it, just for something fun, I want you all to come up with some team names in your group, by the way. It would be a great thing. 
All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Does anyone need a pen? I don't think so. I think we're good. Of course. Okay. Cool. I think Do you need a pen? Fine. Yeah. I was looking at time. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite it. song. Or the job, at least. Yeah. How, long, how long is it? 50. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> Do you all have any questions or need a pen or anything? Let me know. Do you have any questions so uh, far? I would agree with bad Brad Pitt. I was just curious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I like it. Feel out of any yet? Yeah. That you have. Julia Roberts. I was gonna say there's probably a good way to start. Yes. Think about like <laughs> these are crazy. What's I'm gonna the call purpose them. of like you know when you see somebody yeah, on the street like, advertising and these are actually their first whatever, job like, suits. Suits. like what's the purpose of that job? Like right. So that might be that like a good starting point. Yet? That's Mm -hmm. These are actually like their. I he got um, hired as an actor because George Lucas saw like his hard work. Really? Yeah, these are like actual oh. first jobs I looked up. <laughs> I did not make the images. <laughs> we are utilized. Also, it's kind of intercultural. Sorry to like pop up. Who do y'all have? I can't remember. Meg is it Megan Fox. It's <laughs> a great. Why not? <laughs> oh man, that's funny. So, what are y'all thinking so far? So far, we have sales experience, customer service, marketing. Do you need any help? You doing good? Okay. I she like actually, those. her other one. job, which I don't know, she just like cleans houses for people. That was almost boring. There's nothing wrong with that answer. I'm just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the her real first job. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna call into yeah, the group. A lot of people have like really funny first jobs, so yeah. I want everyone to hear. Yeah, true that. Yeah, you get more out of that stuff than you realize, right? <laughs> All right, cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm. Do we end at 5:50? Mm-hmm. I found that out on this first. I don't know. Do we have time for the other activity? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I was talking about that. And also, I said the team name thing so we could give out some candy. So, so if there's 20 minutes. Minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah, so we won't do that. We'll yeah, okay. We only have 15 minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> only 15 minutes. Lady. Right? Yeah. The moment. Hi, video, because I realize it's recording all of this. Hi, video. <laughs> Five more than I thought. Hello, everyone. Okay, should we bring it back then? Yeah, it's up to you. It's your world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Did everybody get a chance to come up with some good transferable skills for their celebrity? All right. Did anybody have a really funny celebrity job? I'm looking at this team over here. <laughs> Yours was my favorite. Do you have a transferable skill you want to share? Oh, you can give me a story, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got different celebrities. Yeah. Jobs different? Yeah, the jobs are all different. Yeah. We had Brad Pitt, and his first job was working for a Pollo Loco. He had to dress up in a chicken costume, dance, and hand out flyers. So everybody hear that? Brad Pitt's first job was working for a, a Mexican chicken restaurant or something, and he had to dress up in a chicken suit and dance outside on the street and hand out flyers to everybody. And what transferable skill did you come up with for that? Um, advertising and marketing. Mm-hmm. And then, you said that and you might have been able to speak Spanish. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so advertising know. and marketing and speaking Spanish, all are very good transferable skills. Yep. And let me ask, did y'all come up with a team name? If you do, I have candy involved. <laughs> 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 and thus the team names begin being discussed. <laughs> it's okay if you don't, it's totally fine. Just wanted to ask. Said no? No worries. It's great, I loved your answers, it's fine. All right, any other groups? We have a team name. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the team name? Well, so first we 
first, we have to say our job. So yep. Harrison Ford um, was a self-taught carpenter, and he built sets for stars like George Lucas. So we're the carpenter crew. Oh, so. the carpenter crew. I'm loving it. All right. I've got all the Reese's in the world. Let me see. What do you Oh, All right, so does everybody around. understand what a transferable oh, skill is and I how you can turn your job cashiering? Or, like I worked at Starbucks, and that's still on my resume because it's got a lot of transferable skills on there into things that are relevant to what you're applying for. Does everybody mm -hmm. get that? All right. All right. <clears throat> so back to the resume, Grace Global's resume. Our next section is collegiate involvement. And you don't need to have this section on here. Um, this could be titled a lot of things. You could do a volunteer section. You could do clubs, anything like that. Um, we definitely want you to get out there now, especially since so many of you are first years, to join a lot of clubs, join sororities, get leadership positions while you're young, and then, you know, build your way up to leadership. Um, and again, you're going to put the dates on the right side, reverse chronological order, and then your bullet points are going to start with action verbs, and they are going to focus on what you contributed to the job, just like your um, experience section. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to add, um, uh, kind of like a quick plug in as well, as far as those bullet points, that can be like a really difficult part of the resume, right? Especially like really getting that down, like as, as far as like what we want to get across. So one thing I want to just plug in real quick, um, you know how I mentioned like Sarah over here earlier, she is a career counselor at the Career Development Center and they are very well trained at helping you figure out those bullet points in details and getting that really down. So definitely. Um, try to make an appointment with them, and I'm going to talk more about that actually a little bit later, but just wanted to kind of get that out there. <clears throat> All right, next is additional sections. This is also another part of the resume that's up to you with what, which of this stuff you include. Um, some examples could be a skills section. So for someone like me, where I have to apply to jobs where technical skills might be more of a focus, I would consider including this. Um, another thing you could include would be hobbies maybe, uh, but we recommend you only put that on there if it's something that you're really passionate about, you've spent a lot of time with, and it could potentially even be relevant to the, to the job opportunity. One reason you might want to include sections like these is you might be able to relate to the employer somehow. Maybe they have some of the same interests that you do. Um, it's also another way to fill out your resume if you feel like you can't with the other experiences that you've had. Um, other sections you could add would be career-focused interests. Those, again, are like the hobbies or the collegiate involvement. Um, a project section could be something you can include somewhere in your resume. Uh, where you place this section would be dependent on what you're trying to do with it. If it's like a projects thing and you're applying to a job that would be interested in knowing what projects you've worked on, obviously you'd put it higher up. But for hobbies and stuff, usually it'd go down towards the bottom. Um, and you can also sneak some of your skills into your bullet points early if you don't have enough room for a whole another section on skills. Um, I personally don't have a skills section on my resume, but I do include like proficient with PowerPoint in one of my bullet points. Um, that way it's still on there, but I don't dedicate a whole section to it. Mm -hmm. Very fair. So we're going to go past this a little bit for time purposes. So I know we have talked about a lot so far, so just want to take some time. What questions do you have so far? Still got a little bit left, but just wanted to check real fast. Is PowerPoint yeah. like available online? <laughs> um, I was going to say... I. I can't remember off the top, but I will say if you come up to us afterwards, I will definitely make sure you um, get online. They are recording this presentation, so it yeah, should be so online for everybody. Done. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Any other questions so far? Okay. Yes. Um, as far as technical skills go, um, yeah. uh, I think it's probably better to, to explain my situation because at the end of the semester, I'll, I'll have learned a, a technical skill, like, for example, a programming language at mm -hmm. this course, but I'm interviewing companies that for like 12 positions mm -hmm. for next, next spring. Mm -hmm. um, so what like what's the best way to how would you recommend placing that in, in, a, in a resume where you know when, when they see a certain specific programming language that I don't necessarily I'm not very adept at it at the moment but by the end of the semester I, I will have learned it. Okay um, so do you have multiple languages you know by any chance? Yeah I mean there, there are some that I've done 
familiar with it now, but it was like, <coughs> like assembly was a right from the language. Okay. By the end of the semester, that you know that that would be something that I could put, you know, like I could confidently place him on the list. But at the moment, uh, hmm. like in other words, how, how do I communicate to the employer that I am on the resume that that I'm not currently learning this relevant skill that, that is relevant to your? Okay, so. What I've done in the past is I've included, so I've listed all of them and just kind of put them in the order of like how well I knew them. I didn't like clarify that. Um, I'm not sure if Sarah yeah, wants to jump in here. Sure, I can answer that question. Um, if, there, if you're a STEM student and there are certain programming knowledge mm -hmm. skills that you want to include on your resume, you can include them. I would recommend that you put in parentheses maybe basic um, or beginner or um, basic in progress. The other thing that you can do is in your education section, you can include relevant coursework and mention some of the courses that you're taking that is teaching that programming language so then they know that you're taking coursework that would teach that. Um, so you can do either or. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Any other questions? Alrighty, so one big thing that I want to talk about, especially before we go, so how many of you all in this room know about EPAC at all? That is really great. That is really good. Okay, so EPAC, um, as a lot of you have heard, it's a huge job database that we offer here through the Career Development Center um, that has a lot of opportunities on it, all the way from jobs and internships. Also, if, with career fairs, you're able to look and see through EPAC like who's attending the career fairs. It has a lot available to you. Uh, but the one big thing I want to stress is in EPAC, you actually have the ability to make appointments with your specific career counselor, like I was talking about earlier. So if you look to the, I think I want to say this top right, I should, I, I'll, I should demonstrate it. But if, if you would like to see specifically, please come up later and I will definitely show you. So, you also have an EPAC launch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so there, there is a tab uh, for you to be able to make an appointment with your career counselor. And it'll have them set up. You'll be able to like see schedules and then be able to find where your times align and then make a schedule with your appointed uh, career counselor. Uh, the other thing, and in those uh, appointments, you're able to get your resume critiqued, even have like mock interviews and things of that nature. So it's a very useful tool to take advantage of. All right. OK, so now we're going to be talking about our final tips and tricks. And my big one, which I sort of mentioned earlier, is to have the job description out in front of you. And that way, if you're at a loss for some action verbs or you're trying to see what does this company really want over this other company that I'm applying to, you can pull the verbs and the adjectives they have listed in there and just put them right in your resume. It makes it really easy. Um, a lot of times if you're applying for things online, which most of us do these days, sometimes they even have searches and they'll just cancel your resume out if, you're not, if you don't have this amount of the words that they're looking for. So that's my tip, is to pull from um, the job description. All right, one thing I want to tell you all is um, when you're submitting a resume, save it as a PDF first and include your name in the, the file name. That way that the employer can just look at the files and quickly notice which one's yours instead of having to dig through them. Who knows, they might not even want to bother looking back through all of them to find it. So that'll help you in the future. And the reason you want to save it as a PDF is that it maintains the format of the file. If they open it on a different version of Word, some stuff might be changed around. And, and then they can't even change anything on your resume too, so that's another good reason to do it. And the final tip I want to leave you all with, um, agree with theirs 100%, but then the last thing, it's a really simple thing, is just to keep in mind, no matter all you do, even if things don't go well, like your resume is not the entire embodiment of you, so do not take that too hard, like if something does not go well. So just, it's just, just continue working on it constantly. Um, and another little small tip I'll add is, if you ever get a chance, just put all your experiences out that you can think of one day and just have like almost like a master resume, that's what I do. And then when I'm trying to apply to jobs, I like pick from it exactly what I want and like what, what I find the most relevant or the most helpful makes it a little easier when you're trying to put things together. All right. So um, just so you know, quick few things. Uh, the Career Development Center, it's located in 2100 Pullen Hall. If you don't know where that is, uh, if you even know where uh, Braga and Witherspoon are, 
those buildings, it's literally like right in between them, almost diagonal that way. It's on Dan Allen, like right next to the bus stop. Uh, but they have walk-in hours Monday through Friday, 11 to 2, where you can quickly maybe get some resume critiques and things of that nature. On floor two. On floor two. That's true. Yep. Floor two. That's important. And then also, as far as resume critiques and things of that nature go, we are having a career tips and tricks launch later on, October 23rd and 24th, where we'll be giving out some of those services and things of that nature. Um, also, you can find this career guide online. If you Google NCSU career guide, if you lose this ever, there's a PDF of it. It should be like the first link on Google. So um, you can do that. And that's really easy. You can command F, search the career guide real fast. Yep. And the last thing before any of you leave, we are students just like you, and we're all trying to improve as presenters. So if you do get a chance, um, if you can visit that website, uh, that URL right now, if you can pull out your phones, um, or if you have like Snapchat or a QR code scanner, you can scan that QR code and just uh, basically just give us some feedback on how we did today. We really do appreciate it. And we thank you all so much for coming out here. And uh, thank you so much for spending your time you. and your day. And feel free to come up to us if you have any questions. By all means, this. please. Thank you.